What's up everybody? We are on a phase two inspection and what that is is uh, right before they put in the insulation. I'm a little tired, I don't know why. But <laughs> uh, right before they put in the insulation, so we're inspecting the plumbing, the uh, normally the vapor barrier, but they got the hardy up in place and uh, uh, electrical wiring and framing. Uh, James has already been out here for about half an, an hour. hour. An hour? Probably oh. an hour or so. Oh yeah. man, yeah, and he's found all kinds of crazy stuff. Yep. Yeah, you were telling me that there's missing um, missing fasteners and the, the J-hangers, twisted studs, plumbing. Twisted studs, uh, knocked out, extra knocked out uh, double top plates that should be, you know, there should be some sort of plate that protects it a little bit more yeah. just because they notch it out. Um, stud shoes missing, there are some overboard studs. Uh, we also have plumbing lines that need to be resecured. You know, just the basic stuff. Yeah, what's funny is like, that's like normal for us to find, but every time someone sees this video and be like, oh my God, they're building like that. And we're yeah. like, yeah, as you can see behind us. Nothing but trash. Yeah, it's, this is not a very clean job site. And yeah, it's just kind of expected on these phase two inspections. So that's why it's important to get an inspection, but also to follow up and make sure they get this stuff done. Because a lot of times whenever we call this out, they're just gonna- Cover it up. Yeah, cover it not up. Not even do anything about it. Yeah. And <laughs> move on to the next phase. Yeah, they'll be much. like, cool inspection report <laughs> yeah. unless you get a reinspection done um, yeah. that's really about it yeah with that reinspection that's where it really follows up i feel like they do do a lot whenever they hear yeah. that we're coming back especially before all the insulation goes back up you want to double check everything just to make sure that they actually fixed it versus yeah. just saying that they did and they never did yeah so. all right cool let's uh let's go look at some of the stuff Alrighty. Where are we starting outside? Uh, we can start inside. All right, we're starting inside. All right, so over here in the garage, we have a couple of joist hangers. Uh, they're all missing a few nails. There's about three right here. And then this last one over here in this corner, there's about three missing up here too. Right, that's really about it in the garage. All right, so over here in this pantry area. <laughs> All right, so over here in this pantry area, we have this drain line right here that's going through this stud. And you can see that it's been overboard and all they did was put a nail plate in place versus a stud shoe, uh, so that's not right. Definitely needs some extra support because they bored out more than 50% of the stud. There you go. All right, so there's a couple of joist hangers in the kitchen area right here. Um, this whole right side is missing about four or five nails. This one, his entire right side is missing a few nails too. And the rest of these are actually okay. We also have this duct right here that's being crushed. Uh, this range hood runs this way, but this supply duct coming down over here into the living room isn't gonna be ducting very well. All right, so this is basically an overboard stud right here and you should see the stud shoe over it. This is what the kitchen one should have is a stud shoe instead of just a nail plate in place. Also, some of these water lines are just a little bit loose, so some of these could be resecured as well. There's a couple of other joist hangers right here, missing nails on the left side, missing nails on the right side, left side, and right side. Wow, so, man, they're, they're missing mm -hmm. fasteners everywhere. Pretty much. Dang. Wow, that's, that, one, that one's just pretty bad. I guess it's not as bad as the living room one. <laughs> yeah, or the kitchen one. The kitchen one, yeah. With all the nails missing. Yeah. So looking out this window, I always like to look at the roof structure and you can see that on this left side over here, there's actually a piece of flashing missing and then this mechanical exhaust termination right here is actually lifted up a little bit. So it definitely needs to be resecured. So right here we have a two by six heading from the top all the way down and it's split right here in the corner and it's only sitting on like a little, little nub and so we need to replace a, a two by six here. All right, so this LVL that you see right here is definitely missing a joist hanger. So this guy right here should be up there. You just find that on the ground? No, it's just hanging right here. <laughs> <laughs> so they know it's missing. To, to be continued. <laughs> they even typed it out right here. Joist hanger, missing. I'm not sure if you can see this, but this entire right side vertical line right here is all missing nails in this joist hanger. On this back side right here, you can see that the T-ply is kind of pulled in a little bit. It just needs to be repaired so that they can bring it back out and fire block around it, of course. So while James turns around and gives you all the bad news, 
I'm gonna give you some good news on this property. I really like how all the windows are done on this property. They brought in the vapor barrier around the corner and then they brought the tape up over the vapor barrier. So if any water comes into this property, it's going to leak on the outside or not really cause any damage underneath the window. It will it'll be harder to cause any damage around the window. The only thing that we'd recommend is just caulk the security wires there. Um, but yeah, this is, this, this window looks pretty good. All right, anytime you have uh, any holes between the first floor, second floor, second floor, third floor, um, everything between the floors should always be fire blocked and sealed off just in case if you ever have a fire on the downstairs floor, it actually gives it a little bit of resistance before it comes up. All right, so looking at this, this plumbing stack right here, uh, you can see that there's actually a nail plate in here uh, to actually protect the drain line. Uh, just in case any nail does get penetrated, uh, the nail plate actually stops it from penetrating the actual drain line. Up top over here too, uh, there's a nail plate over it. And then the separation between the second floor and the third floor, there's actually fire blocking all the way around uh, the drain line, which is great. The only thing missing is the fire blocking for the HVAC refrigerant lines. All right, so we have this header for this door and you can actually see that it's slightly pulled loose. It's not nailed all the way in this way. So it definitely needs to be pushed in. So my favorite type of houses are always the inspector, the older ones, and I like to make videos of that because it has all the problems. But uh, it seems like everybody is liking the new build content because that's what everyone's buying. That's what's available right now. And if you like this type of content, I will do my best to keep doing it. And just leave a comment below and hit that like button so it lets me know that you like phase two inspections and uh, I'll keep trying to make that content. All right, let's go to the next problem that James found. All right, um, typically for Z flashing, we see, we see a lot of builders, uh, they actually don't do this correctly, uh, but in this case, um, this one actually looks pretty nicely done because the Z flashing is actually not just over the window itself, but it's actually over the side trims too, so it's fully protected. So right here on this Z flashing, we see this often, but whenever they trimmed out the window and they add in the Z flashing, they overcut in the hardy siding. This is a, a prone area to sideway wind, wind, wind rain, and it's an easy spot for water to get in this little, this little uh, cut. And whenever people, the argument is, oh, it's small, you know, it's not that big of a deal, but everything has to be 100% watertight because even if it's 99.9, .9, that 0.01% chance, that's where all the damage comes from. And we're on the third floor too. So you have water coming in around a window, three stories up. Uh, I mean, the damage could just go really far just from a little cut in a window. So it's something that you definitely wanna bring a big deal up if you see something like that. If you look over here, you can actually see a piece of counter flashing missing on this backside. Oh, definitely, nice. Definitely yeah. prone to water intrusion right here, too. Yeah, water would definitely get in there. Right down over here. Nice spot. Okay, we're moving along the outside. And one thing I do want to bring up is it's really good idea to do your best to get the inspection done before the exterior siding is on. I know that's not the case, you know, as a buyer, you don't have that choice sometimes, but the, I'd say a majority of home problems do not come from misinstalled siding. It would be from a poorly installed vapor barrier because that's gonna be your last resort. And I'd have to say, I would think 90% of the vapor barriers that we looked at, there's holes in them, they're not taped up properly, they're crinkled, they're not rolled properly. And that's, that's something that you definitely want to focus on as a buyer the most is the vapor barrier. All right, so for all the nails that penetrate through the hardy siding, uh, manufacturer specifications specifically tell you to not over, to not to over penetrate them. Um, and you can see some of them over here, they are over penetrated, but theoretically they should all be flush against the siding. Shouldn't be underdriven, shouldn't be overdriven. Uh, and any of the overdriven nails that we do see here, technically they should fill in with some caulking at least. So right over here, I, I, I like this installation, minus right here. But uh, anytime you have any transition changes or level changes, your uh, Hardy requires a Z flashing to go behind the siding, which they did. And a lot of times they don't do that. They just come in and they'll caulk over it or, or something like that. Um, one thing to note is since you have the Z flashing here, 
a lot of the times they're gonna come in and put a bead of caulking here and you do not wanna do that. Uh, because say, hypothetically speaking, water gets behind this siding. You want it to do what it's supposed to do is let water drain. So, um, but right here, I don't, I still don't understand how they keep doing this, but uh, they, they're they overcutting in these locations and a lot of the times they're just gonna come in and just put a bead of caulking here and that just adds another maintenance side or for the, the homeowner but you really want this house to be as watertight as possible and this just adds another another thing to take care of whenever you're a homeowner. <laughs> Look at that. Uh, good thing they have a good clean workspace over there. <laughs> Most of the time, I'm just letting y'all know if y'all see a workspace like this, you're going to find quite a bit of items like missing fasteners, unsecured things, studs not secured properly, and it all comes from is something as simple as cleaning, uh, unclean workspace. You know that they're not taking care of the small things around a property.